Pode hoje. Thanks. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling? Like death. <laughs> it was nice being in Ukraine. When we got close to the show, like the last few days in Ukraine, we're like scorching hot. Like it was so warm and it literally felt like we was on holiday. We've come back to the shit. Even though there isn't any place like home, it would just be nice if it was a little bit warmer. Just, just a little bit. Boyfriend fit hoodies. This is massive. It feels like I'm wearing a dress. Look at your skinny little knees. I look like a five-year-old. <laughs> Very nature-esque. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna make sure that I don't fall. It's just beautiful. Pretty. It is. We literally exist here. Like Narnia. Exist. Exist here. Existing in this realm. I've said it before, but this like forest area is like literally just outside my dad's place within like a two minute walk out of the front door. I used to play here a lot as a kid and it's very like Lord of the Rings sort of like. It's pretty, but it's like with a hint or two of like a bottle and garbage. Oh, that, I know, right? It's a good lake though. <laughs> Remote. Myself and Jordi have just come out to do a bit of a morning walk, get some steps in and stuff. It is currently exactly eight days post Ukraine show. We flew back on the Monday after the show that was on the Sunday and it has been an emotional week to say the least. There's been ups and downs and this, well, I'm gonna sit down there by the bench right now and just like kind of break down what's been happening over the last week and the conclusion that has been reminiscing in my mind for the past few days, a decision that I made last night, but solidified this morning with myself, my family, my dad, a couple of friends, um, my coach Callum, most importantly. And um, now I'm gonna sit down and talk to you guys about the decision that I'm making. Jordi has a very important decision to make for herself. I'll let her do that in her own time, but I'm pretty sure I know what I'm, well, I said I'm pretty sure, I'm definitely sure that I know now what I need to do and the decision I am making. So, just a morning walk, but... Emotional morning walk? Emotional this morning walk. This is gonna be a deep one. I'm not really too sure how to kind of start this. You know, for the past few hours, I've been like, I guess, speaking so much and trying to like make sense of things in my mind. With it being eight days post-show, the dust has settled and all the endorphins have, you know, just like gone away and I've, I've been able to come back over the last week. And up until a few days ago, the plan was always the same. The last thing I said in Ukraine was that me and Jordi are going to be doing the Alicante show on the 10th of July and then a week later on the 17th of July we'll be doing the Amateur Olympia in Portugal. Originally going into the Ukraine show the goal was to do a show two weeks later after Ukraine which was either in Cyprus. The schedule was forever changing but essentially we knew we wanted to do a show two weeks after the show which was the last one we did eight days ago. Over the course of the competition day I received a lot of feedback from the judges and the head judge Emilio said it would be in my interest because after after prejudging, there was a situation that happened. I'm gonna make a video after this one, which is gonna break down the situation that happened. At prejudging, I essentially got first call outs, was compared, stepped off stage, was about to go and do my routine, and then everyone inside the hotel, the mall, every, it basically had to be evacuated out of the arena. I'm gonna make a full video about this after this one, because I got a lot of footage of that event and like the actual breakdown of what actually happened and how scary that whole thing was. The head judge, Emilio, saw me outside and he, he went to Callum and he said, I wanna give Brandon some feedback. And his feedback was, you need to be bigger but you could potentially be the future of classic physique. You have so much potential. You have so much potential to be, you know, something great in classic. You just need some more time. I want you to do my show, which essentially is in three weeks tomorrow, which is the IFBB Spain show in Alicante, which is on the 10th of July. In terms of feedback of what to change from show to show, he basically said, do not change a single thing. Bring the same size, same condition, because there's nothing you can do with your physique right now. Because I was already the leanest on stage. The only reason I was able to carry myself at a pro qualifying event was because of the fact that I had condition, because I didn't have the size, I didn't have the muscle maturity, and my posing definitely could have done some work as well like there was a part in my routine where I kind of like tripped a little bit and it was a bit embarrassing but like regardless the comparison posing and everything was good it just the routine like you know inevitably the biggest form of feedback that I got was that I need about 10 to 15 pound of muscle to be competitive on a pro qualifying stage let alone a pro stage if I achieve my IFBB pro card which was the main goal when I started this prep 20 weeks ago, I had a few goals in mind. 
One of them was to be in the best condition of my entire life, to bring a package to the stage that I'd never ever brought before. And we did it. And then we competed again after winning the overall in London to then go to Ukraine and to do the first pro qualifying event, which was another goal I set for myself. I wanted to do a pro qualifier and bring an even better package. And we also did that. We also completed that goal on the 20th week of prep. The weirdest thing is that after competing in Ukraine, the goal that I set out to complete at the beginning of this prep was which is to achieve an IPP Pro card, completely shifted because I learned more from competing in Ukraine, from the feedback, from the being on stage with this high caliber of athlete, than I can even begin to explain. There is so much work that I need to do to be on the level to be worthy of achieving an IVB Pro card. Who am I to think at the age of 24 years old, having only done seven shows and never really completed a structured bulking off season to actually build good quality muscle and to think I can just rock it to a pro qualifying event and just compete and get my pro card. Like it's not that easy. One thing I've experienced over the last week is a lot of self doubt and a lot of thinking that I'm not good enough, a lot of questioning my reason why. Not my reason why I'm competing, but my reason why I wanna compete again. The goal to achieve an IPB Pro Card is more real now than it has ever been. And this has almost enlightened me and given me the ability to think logically, to aid me in making the decision on what the most strategical thing for me to do and the most productive thing for me to do right now at this current position. Because as you can see, we're currently eight days post show. I have literally been on plan ever since the show. I took two days off, me and Jordi enjoyed some food, but for the past five days, I've been back on plan and I weighed in this morning at 204.1 pound, which is four pound above the weight that I was one day out from the Ukraine show. I haven't rebounded, I haven't fallen off, I haven't been like, I need food, I need food, I need to eat. And like, you know, just, you know, recording this clip now, absolutely massive balloon faced and having lost control because I feel like I have more control now than ever. That's not the problem. But the thing that's been in my mind is what would make more sense for me to attempt to maintain the condition that I currently have, jeopardizing my health. Because I haven't made a video on my supplement stack just yet, and I haven't made a video breaking down what anabolics and the protocols that we have been utilizing to bring the condition. This is a video that's gonna be coming a little bit in the future, so you can see my full supplement breakdown. But staying on prep for a total of another four weeks, would that be the best decision? Would I be sacrificing potential muscle mass, which is the one thing that I need to try and retain and bring to a future show if I wanna stand a chance against winning a pro qualifier? Or would it make sense to listen to the judges' feedback knowing that the stage is always going to be there? Regardless, if I achieve my pro card this year, to be on the standard, to be actually be competitive in a pro show, I literally have to gain 15 to 20 pound of sheer muscle mass. To simplify it, I can achieve a pro card this year and I can be a skinny guy that needs to take two years off to build muscle to be competitive on a pro stage, or I can take a year off now having not achieved my pro card, the stage is still gonna be there, the work that I have to do still has to be done, but instead I could achieve a pro card this year, hold on to it, but not be able to utilize it because I'm still not gonna be ready. So does it make sense to achieve a pro card a year before I'm even ready to spend it? It's like imagine having like a really nice car, but you can't actually drive it yet because you haven't passed your license to be able to drive that car. It's like, you know, in the UK, you have to be 17 or 18 to like pass your test. Your mom buys you a Ferrari when you're 15, me achieving a pro card now, but I can't drive it and I can't utilize the pro card until I put the work in past my driving test. You know, do you know what I'm trying to say? Me achieving my pro card at the moment doesn't actually matter. Some people achieve their pro card and they're like, I'm done with competing. I don't want to compete anymore. There are people on social media right now that you probably know of that have achieved their pro card and they're like, yep, I've achieved this goal. I'm done. That's not my main goal. My main goal isn't to achieve a pro card. My main goal is to go to the Olympia. My main goal is to step on the Olympia stage and step on a pro show and actually bring a physique that leaves people like, wow, that was absolutely beautiful. That was mesmerizing. That is exactly the way I want to look. And that is what I want to build. If I take a year off and my main goal over the next year is strategically plan out month by month the weight I want to be, the amount of muscle I want to gain, and the way I want to progress. If I spend the next month on prep, that is going to be me taking away a whole month of my potential one year off season. If you break down a month in percentages, that's about eight and a half, eight percent of progress that I could be making on the off season. That's almost 10% of the progress that I can make to bring a better physique to stage 
next year and actually potentially be worthy of achieving a pro card. And when I say worthy, I don't mean like, you know, truly deserving of a pro card because I believe the amount of work that I've put into this prep, I am deserving of a pro card. But am I ready for it yet? That is a completely different thing in itself. Being backstage at these events and seeing the sheer muscle mass and the quality of density that the guys that I was literally stood next to. There was a moment when I was getting my tan backstage and the guy that actually got third, which is crazy that I beat him, but you know, there was him and the guy that actually beat me in my class. I was in the tanning room, sat next to these guys on a chair and I was looking at myself and I was like, I am actually a small boy compared to these guys. The guy that achieved his pro card, the one that won the overall, if you look at his traps, his chest, his shoulders, his density, that sheer structure that he has as he walks towards me and me even stood next to him, that is someone that is pro standard. That is someone that will do well on a pro stage. Am I there yet? Am I ready for that yet? The answer is no. It's hard when, you know, so many people are like, you're gonna get a pro card, you're gonna get a pro card, you're gonna achieve this and that. And a lot of the reason I wanted to stand prep for another four weeks as well became less of reasons why being birthed from like my desire to stand prep and more so reasons why I should stand prep based on other people judging me for stopping prep. When you get the chance to come back and just take a breath, be around family and have conversations with your coach and your friends that mean the world to you, when you actually speak to these people and they, they tell you, Brandon, What's the best thing for you? What's the best thing for you right now? Not everyone else. Not everyone else's source of motivation. Not, everyone want, not what everyone else wants for you. What do you want for yourself? I want to be a better athlete. I want to be able to bring a better physique to the stage, knowing, having competed twice, knowing what I need to do to actually be competitive. I had a conversation this morning that really meant a lot to me um, with Josh Bridgman. You know Josh, um, we filmed a video together like literally a few weeks ago, who was also on prep and actually just achieved his IFBB Pro Card in men's physique after competing four times. Josh is someone that I've compared myself to in a good way this entire prep and I've utilized as a source of motivation because he is also coached by Callum. Me and Josh are in a very similar position in terms of he is living my future life. Josh is 28 years old and in 2019 when he was 26, he did the same thing that I've just done and he has learned the same things in 2019 that I am learning now. I want to start off this clip by saying I have a huge appreciation and admiration for this decision. Um, as someone who has made a very, very similar decision in their past, to take a step away, to come back undeniable, it's a truly, truly difficult, difficult, difficult decision when you're faced up with social media pressure, when you're faced up with the pressure that you put on yourself, when you've set yourself really, really high goals and you might not not achieve them right now, when you're so, so close to that thing that you've worked for for a very long time and you just miss a little bit of that ingredient. Good job, to go away and make those changes to come back undeniable. I'm someone who's walked in that path before in 2019. I was ever so close to my pro card, but I was just missing that size. I was missing that extra ingredient that would have tipped me over to get that pro card, so. Here we go. Yes. Willing, big man. Yes, yes. yes lad. Which means your first place winner. Number 39. Yes, Josh. First place, overall. We took the win, we took the overall. Four days time, so on Thursday, we fly to Italy for an IFBB Pro Qualifier. This will be for the Pro Card. We have to get the overall there to get the pro card, so. Let's go, so, there we have it. It's just the fullness, the size, the thickness that I need, and, and unfortunately, we're gonna have to go away and gonna have to go get it. I think the hardest part of this is just knowing that you've gotta wait another year for that dream. It's just the result we needed and we'll come back and get it next time. The fullness wasn't there, the density wasn't there and I said, I did think that size was going to be the issue. We reclaimed size, we got bigger and we got better and better and better and better. But it wasn't good enough for the pro card um, and that is horrifically savage to take.
is going to be one of the biggest years of my life, but I'm here for it. I've prepared the best that I possibly can. The time is now. Be broken, goes to Josh Bigman ah! from UK. Having walked in those shoes, I'm truly, I'm proud of this, Brandon's decision. I think it's a right decision. And I think Brandon will go away and he'll come back undeniable. For you to take that step away now, in order to come back stronger, better, undeniable, to achieve those goals that you've set out. One of the hardest decisions you ever make when you're in the game. This is the right decision. It's gonna be a great decision and you're all gonna watch that unfold. Um, so I'm proud of your decision, Brandon. And uh, I'm excited to be a part of, of the next step. So let's get after it. This is the journey that I am about to embark on because now, as of today, prep is over. The part that's hard for me is weighing out the reasons why and what is the best decision to make along with managing the pressure from the outside world. When all that really matters is what's important to me, my girlfriend and my family and my friends and my friends have been so supportive. Zane has been with me this whole time and he's been very supportive about this whole thing. Obviously my coach Callum knows what we need to do. He also knows that we need to build some muscle. He knows that that is the one thing we're lacking. We're not lacking symmetry. We're not lacking the lines. I have the genetics for this. I'm lacking the one thing that I can't fix in the next three or four weeks and that is pure muscle mass. We had a call earlier on and this is what we concluded from the call that we actually had earlier. That's why my head I don't want to waste 10% of our time when we could spend it progressing. If you hadn't have said that you wanted to do Alicante, I wouldn't have said do it. You wouldn't have said do it? After Ukraine, if you didn't turn pro. Would you have said, like if, if Emilio didn't say that, would you have said, okay, Brandon, we now know what to do, now it's time to grow? Yeah. The thing you proved to yourself this year is, you're knocking on the door and you have all the accolades to turn pro. The only variable that we haven't had yet is time spent putting tissue. The, the guys that you were competing against at the weekend, those are the guys that have knocked on the door for years and years and years, yeah. and gone back into their off seasons and have come back better. That's our that's our first shot, isn't it? Like yeah. We haven't had time to then go, right, this is where we're at. Like Just like Josh did, this is where we're at. This is what we've got to do between now and when we next start prep. Exactly. And when you next start prep, you're in a position where it's like, I have everything I need now to knock on the door and for it to open. There is a chance you could turn pro here, but all of the heavens would have to open for that to happen because all we need is one person in that show who comes in with the same structure as you in the same condition 
that just 10 to 15 pounds heavier and they'd be eating you. Now, if you had turned pro in Ukraine, then it would be a different story because it's done then and then we can go back into the off season. But, yeah. uh, you know, I, I was telling her, the best thing that could have happened to you this weekend is, is not winning because yeah. it's now giving you the reality check of what's required for you to turn pro in the first place. If I won, what would I have learned? The off season would be a replica of what happened last year and you turn up for a pro show and you get slammed hard. There is there is 15 pounds there, just like this. It's just about applying yourself. Oh yeah, just like that. <laughs> Alakazam. <laughs> this is the end of prep. This is the end of hard body shredding. 2000. And 21. I think the one thing that I'm grateful to take away from this whole experience is for the first time on prep, it has been the most plain sailing, easiest, effortless prep for the reason that, you know, on prep sometimes when you take supplements, when you put your body under stress, like your family life is jeopardized or you treat people differently or you handle certain circumstances different to you usually would because you're, you're stressed, you take your anger out and various other things. To walk away from this whole prep knowing that I was a good boyfriend, I was there for my friends, there for my family and I was able to go through this whole journey with a positive attitude and a good mindset and going into a negative space is an, is an amazing thing and to walk away with it with a overall win and second in my first ever pro qualifying event. Like I, I actually couldn't be happier with how this prep has gone and, and I'm so grateful for this experience and stuff and I'm so happy with things that have happened and stuff and, and being able to leave this prep and take away from this experience more than I ever thought I'd be able to take away from any prep. And it's a clearer mind and it's a more focused outlook on the goal at hand, which is to one day be an IFBB pro and to one day be worthy of a placing at the Olympia or something along those lines. Although the driving factor for finishing prep has nothing to do with like the urge to eat because obviously I'm gonna be on plan. I'm gonna receive my off-season plan from Callum in literally like two days time. And if I want a successful off-season, I have to be following a structured off-season plan. I'm definitely gonna eat some stuff that's like enjoyable, but I'm not gonna be like, the, the next time you see me, I'm not gonna be a water buffalo having gained 40 pound because I couldn't control what I wanted to eat. That's in no way, shape or form the reason I'm stopping prep. But it's gonna be nice to not be so food focused because like the, over the past few days, like I've been speaking about food, thinking about food. Last night, I had a fucking dream about food. Who dreams about doing a 10,000 calorie challenge? Like maybe like a month or so, or like a couple of weeks in the future, I may want to do a calorie challenge just because I can. And obviously the goal of the off season is to just eat a mass amount of calories and progress. So food challenges and all that kind of thing is something I can do now. But to have a dream about it is like kind of an indication, like Brandon, like, are you good, bro? Like, are you, are you sure you're okay? <laughs> I have a wonderful girlfriend who is also going to be making a decision as well, whether she wants to stay in prep because Geordie is, is experiencing things now on her prep that is a lot darker, a lot deeper, and a lot more emotional, uh, emotionally straining than me. My health is still good. I basically got bloods done a few weeks ago, and there are some markers that are a bit off. There are some things that we do need to take care of, but nothing is out of whack. I'm not like in a bad place. There's nothing basically going on with me that we can't fix and won't go back to normal when I'm on TRT. But Geordie, emotionally, um, her digestive tract, different things are happening that may render her if she carries on to actually never be able to compete again because of a health situation. When you see a girlfriend throughout the day and she wakes up and she cries and she goes to sleep and she cries and she goes throughout the day and she's incredible pain and she can barely even walk or train because she's in so much pain, that's hard to deal with and that's hard to see amongst my own emotional battle as well. But if Geordie decides to stay on prep and do the Alicante and the Portugal show or potentially an earlier show because those shows are my goal, she just wants to step on stage again so she may do another show, I will be at those shows and I will be supporting her with her goals and what she wants to do which is just gain stage presence right now. The main goal for me right now is to just make sure that my girlfriend is okay, make sure that she's mentally strong and make sure that every decision that she's making is with her best interests at heart as I am making those decisions for myself. This series has been an absolute pleasure to record and the last show day video if you haven't seen it yet i'm going to do a pop-up right here for the ukraine show day video the final show day video of this prep it was a freaking movie and shout out to zane for putting his heart and soul into that video it was a pleasure to watch and there's jordy hello and for me and jordy to have that memory of ukraine you know documented in such a way like zane the video mm. it being like so amazing so if you haven't seen it yet go check it out that's it i'm done oh you did it i'm done i'm proud of you we're done if you enjoyed the entire series smash a like if you haven't already turn on post notifications and subscribe also if you haven't already and we will see you in the next video peace Woo! prep is done time to get fat <laughs> tell me you've stopped dieting without telling me you stopped dieting